Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the uh, MarSurf M310 featured product webinar this afternoon. For those of you who may have uh, been expecting George Schutz when you uh, uh, signed up for the webinar, George had to make a trip to a, a customer um, kind of sort of last minute here, so you're stuck with me. My name is Pat Nugent. I am the Vice President for Product Management here at MAR. Uh, I've been with MAR for about 25 years and I'm responsible for uh, the product management team in North America for all of our MAR products. So I'll be taking over for George and sharing with you some information about our MARSERP M310. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I don't know that we'll have the ability to answer them during the the webinar today, uh, but we will answer them uh, as a follow-up to the webinar via email. Uh, put your email in when you when you registered. So uh, if, at the end, if I have a chance to, I will try to answer some of them. So what we want to talk about today is the MarSurf M310. You see it pictured there on the right. Uh, we want to talk about it. It's a surface finish measuring instrument. We want to talk about it um, in the sense of, of how it fits into the, the idea of measuring surface finish. We'll, we'll start with not a product specific thing, but you know, why, why would you want to measure surface finish? I expect that most of you who are logging in uh, uh, already kind of know that you need to measure surface finish or that you want to measure surface finish or you're already doing it with other instruments. Um, but maybe some of you are in that uh, newbie stage where you're saying, well, I think I need to measure the surface finish. I wonder if this M310 might fit. So let's talk about a little bit why we need to measure surface finish, uh, what surface finish is, and then talk about how the M310 accomplishes that, uh, what kind of features it has, what kind of accessories to fit different applications are available with it, and uh, finally, what, what it can do for you. So if we look at history of tolerances on products manufactured if we go back 50 60 70 years the, pro the the tolerances on products were much much broader much looser and you see that of those tolerances let's say they were uh, four and a half thousandths of an inch and maybe half a thou was uh, what was allowed for form or surface out of the total size tolerance so if you had, let's say, a diameter tolerance on a, on a shaft, you might uh, find that in addition to the, the diameter tolerance, you, you would have some, some tolerance on the roundness of it or the cylindricity of it and maybe the surface finish. And those things, if they got bigger, they kind of entered into the, the size tolerance. And so as we've progressed in our manufacturing capability, in our uh, engineering capabilities, uh, we've gotten to where the world of manufacturing now has tolerances that are much, much tighter, typical tolerances that are much, much tighter than what we had 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Uh, and the, the tolerances for form and surface finish have gone down with them. And it's become a very, very closely tolerant, very uh, critical thing to do to be able to measure surface finish. And this is across all applications, all target markets like automotive, or, uh, aerospace, medical, uh, whatever. Tolerances have gone down everywhere. And we've gotten smarter as designers, developers, engineers, and manufacturers about designing surfaces to perform a certain function. And as they try to perform those functions, they may need to have certain surface characteristics. So the simplest form is, well, it's just appearance, it's cosmetic. I, I want this thing to look good. I want it to be shiny. I want it to be smooth. I want it to look scratch free. Um, but they could have real engineering or functional uh, importance as well, not just cosmetic, but it could be if something, something like an adherence of a coating, a paint or a, another uh, coating, like a vapor deposition coating or something like that, if it's too rough, it doesn't adhere well, or if it's too rough, it, it, after you, you coat it, it doesn't 
Uh, it still doesn't look good, doesn't look smooth. It, um, paint will cover a certain uh, amount of roughness in the on the surface and still have a nice glossy appearance. So if you think of something like a car door body panel type thing, uh, you want to control the roughness so that it, it looks really nice and smooth and, and glossy after painting. But there are other surfaces that are supposed to do functional things like two surfaces are supposed to slide relative to each other. Well, you want to reduce friction. You want to reduce the surface finish to the point where um, they slide well together. Uh, but maybe too smooth is, is really not good. You want it to be just the right amount of smooth. Um, you might want to create specific roughness to uh, allow for some gaps for oil to fill in or things like that so it stays lubricated. So the smoother isn't always better. The, the, the right surface finish is the one that works for the function, not necessarily just smoother. And you want to control surface finish to control your manufacturing process that's creating whatever it is you're, you're creating. So how does surface finish get into the components that, that we manufacture and then, and then need to measure? Well, if we take a very, very simple machine tool like a lathe where we take a, a piece of bar stock and we, we turn that bar stock with a cutting tool that has a single point on it, there's the point of the cutting tool that creates a certain uh, uh, roughness in the in the surface, but there's also maybe uh, something is not perfectly balanced in the bearings, of, uh, and there's a little bit of vibration. And as I move along the carriageway of the machine, um, it's maybe not not perfectly straight. There's a little bit of straightness error that that comes in. So all of those things come into the errors present in the surface, and you see that over on the right side that. You have roughness that's the little stuff like the tool marks. You have waviness that's the maybe the vibration, and you have uh, the profile error or the straightness, which is maybe the the errors from the guideway. So all of those things come into uh, play when you when you're looking at the finish or the surface. And uh, what we want to do is we want to look at the just the part of that which is of you know, of interest to us based on the function. So we want to have the drawing, we want to look at what it asks us to measure, which parameters it asks us to measure, what settings for those parameters, uh, which we'll come back to a little bit later, things like the, the wavelength cutoff, uh, that, that kind of stuff. So surface finish goes back 100 years or more, and you know back then you didn't have any devices, any instruments to measure surface roughness. So surface roughness was measured with the device on the end of your thumb, your thumbnail. And uh, most people who are machinists or tool makers would have a, a box with a, a, a master set in it and they would have some thing like you see in this picture where they would have some different samples of different finish and you would rub your thumbnail across one of those and then rub your thumbnail on the, the piece that you're making and try to find the one that felt the closest to what you were uh, feeling on your uh, Part you were manufacturing and you'd say well that that's what my finish is but we've come a long way since then but fundamentally we're we kind of still do the same thing but we take it in, in the mechanical contact method we take a machine a device which takes a diamond and traces it across the surface not a thumbnail and uh, it uh, samples the surface and collects uh, something like this profile that you see here and we are able to then analyze a lot more detail than what our thumbnail can do and calculate some parameters. Um, and more recently, in the last 30 years or so, optical methods have become uh, very typical as well. And with them, you get more like this kind of a method where you see a, an area on the surface uh, and optical methods will continue, I think, to grow in popularity. There's still very expensive options compared to the simple kind of device we're talking about today. They're very popular, but not as popular as what we're talking about today, just based on ease of use and uh, price point uh, to, to get into the, the ability to measure surface finish. So they are an option, but we're talking today about the M310, which is a uh, contact-based profilometer style 
the diamond that tra traverses across the surface and measures a two-dimensional cut across the surface. That can be done with both skidless and skidded measurements. The difference between skidded and skidless is um, with a skidless instrument, you take the diamond and you move it across the surface and it moves up and down and pivots around a pivot point that is on a straight that datum guide. <clears throat> that datum guide is very, very flat and straight. And so when I see the roughness profile, I can see all of those elements that we talked about in the picture with the lathe uh, because I can, I can measure all different wavelengths. Uh, the simpler instruments, which are the most popular instruments, are skidded. And in this case, the diamond moves up and down relative to a skid, a, a typically piece of metal part of the, uh, some people call it a shoe, not a skid, but it's something which slides across the surface and this uh, diamond moves up and down relative to that. So the advantage to that is, it, you're, you're seeing the little stuff, the roughness, and this skid is sliding across the peaks of the big stuff on the surface and you're getting a, a good measurement of the roughness, but you only get the roughness. You don't get the longer wavelength stuff because the skid is kind of following those things and sort of mechanically filtering them out of the data you have. So you can't, you can't see it. All you see is the skid moving up and down, or the diamond moving up and down relative to the skid. So we collect that profile that we measure as we move the, the stylus across the surface. And once we have collected it, then we have some choices to make. There are actually around about 100 parameters in different international standards, whether they be ISO standards, which are global standards, ASME standards in the US, uh, JIS or Japanese industrial standards in Japan, or motif. Uh, standards which are common in the French automotive industry um, and all of those things can be measured in the devices that that we offer uh, but it means that there's a, a lot of choices to be made the most common thing that we measure here in the US and in most places is the RA the average roughness average roughness is a good measure of kind of generally how rough does something feel uh it is kind of sort of analogous to the uh, machine calculated version of how rough does this feel to my thumbnail uh so it's it is the most popular thing that that we use um but many many people don't don't prefer the the ra roughness and we'll we'll look at it the next slide to, to look at why so if if this red cross hatched area is metal and material, we see in the left one, we see little thin peaks sticking up from the surface that contact the shaft. So this is say a bearing that is holding a shaft and there's a few little peaks, maybe 10 or so on each side that are in contact with the shaft. So not very much contact between the bearing and the shaft. Uh, the, Inverse of that is we have a few valleys that stick into the surface over here, but we've got a lot of surface area, more, much more than over here, a lot of surface area in contact with the shaft, but a few valleys. Well, because the peaks and the valleys are the same height, the average height is the same. So average roughness is the same, but you can imagine that the contact area being much higher here with the, uh, example on the right where much of the the uh, bearing is in contact with the shaft that's going to carry a lot more load and it's not going to wear as easily so same ra because uh, a peak or a valley a point or a scratch uh, all go into a, the ra calculation in the same way because it's just averaging so many people prefer things like rz rather than ra um because of that so the next slide we're going to talk about rz but but another example of why here's a surface on the left take that same surface but add one peak and one valley the ra is almost unchanged because there's only one peak and one valley and there's so many data points being averaged 
that that one valley or one peak or even one peak and one valley, they get just averaged out with all of the other data that's there. So having a big scratch in a part, which might be a performance problem, it might not function, having a big scratch in a part or having a big peak like that, which is gonna scratch the mating part, might not be a good thing, but the RA number is not really gonna change. So for that reason, many people prefer RZ. And RZ is looking at the peak to valley within a certain sampling length and averaging the five uh, of them. We normally measure five sampling lengths. So you get RZ1, RZ2, three, four, and five. Over the course of the surface, you, then you look at the highest peak to the lowest valley within some length, which should be defined on the print. Often not, and when not, we use 30 thousandths of an inch or 0.8 millimeters as a kind of a default, but uh, should be specified on the print. We look at, in that length, we look at the peak to the valley in each of them, find out what the peak to valley height in each of those five sample lengths is, and then we average them together to get a, an overall RZ. So you can see that's much more affected by some uh, peaks and valleys, uh, not averaged out by hundreds or thousands of other data points. It's uh, gonna, gonna give you a stronger response to just a couple of peaks or valleys. And if, mo if some of you are working in larger international companies, uh, you probably see RZ on the drawing because outside the United States, RZ is typically more preferred. It's not for sure, but typically more preferred. And in the United States, uh, RA is typically more preferred, um, but many people are starting to use RZ for, for exactly that for exactly that reason. Uh, one of the really common questions we get, if somebody's really used to using RA and they get a drawing that's got RZ on it, they come and they say, well, how do I calculate uh, RZ if I have RA? Um, because you know I, I understand RA, I use RA all the time, and my customer wants me to manufacture these parts to RZ, so I need to convert RA to RZ. Well, the answer is you can't, you simply cannot. It's a different calculation. As we just looked at, the reason for using it is to be more sensitive to errors on the surface, and RA doesn't have that sensitivity. So RZ is always bigger than RA, but how much bigger depends really on how many peaks and valleys and scratches and peaks and stuff are in the surface. And so typically, RZ is four to seven. Some people say it could be as much as four to 10 times, whatever the RA is. So you really can't convert. If I have an RA, let's say of um, 10 micro inches, and I know that the RZ could be 40 or 70 or 100 micro inches, I mean, that's just, that's just too big of a range. That's not gonna tell me whether something's in or out of tolerances. Uh, so I, I, I really caution anybody against trying to uh, um, convert between them. They're different because they're a different calculation and they're different on purpose. And I know uh, there are some guides out there that give you that four to seven times and try to say, well, be, be conservative and multiply RA by seven and you're still good for RZ. And, eh, it, it's, it's fundamentally something different. And the devices that we offer can measure both. So if your customer wants RZ, but you're comfortable with RA, turn, the, turn both of them on and, and just look at both of them. Uh, make sure that both are in tolerance. So we offer a, a really broad portfolio of surface measuring instruments. What you see here are a few of the portable handheld devices. Um, the three on the left, Pockets are four, PS10, M310 are all skidded. The M400 is skidless. Um, so we, we can see the, the difference between those two that we talked about earlier. Um, the featured product uh, right now is the M310. And so let's look at the, the features of that. Why would one want to use that? So I would say the M310 is kind of in the world of surface measurement. Uh, a, a little bit like, let's use an analogy of um, when, when we go to buy a car today, most of us 
Um, the fact that it has four doors, which all open and close, and a steering wheel that turns, and an engine that turns on, is is a given. You, you know, you you it'd be pretty stupid to buy a car that doesn't have doors that open and close, and a wheel that turns, and an engine that turns on, right? So, what a lot of us care about are some of the features around that, like not only does it get me from point A to point B, but does it have a uh, does it have a navigation system? Or if not a navigation system, does it have uh, compatibility with my smartphone so that I can see the navigation from my smartphone on the, the display? Does it have um, power windows or not? Does it have um, like uh, blind spot monitoring so you get the little light in the mirrors and you know it's a lot of those little things that change the driving experience from a getting a to getting from point a to point b to a getting from point a to point b comfortably um just easier less stress it, it turns it into something that I, I really enjoy and i think the m310 is kind of the the surface finish device, which adds so many features that it makes it an easier experience, easier to integrate into your manufacturing process, easier to use, easier to understand. So it is really kind of the, the higher end experience. So it is a skidded instrument. It uses a diamond stylus that it traverses across the uh, surface to be measured. It has the ability to connect to lots of other devices and systems. It has a touch screen on the top, which is super easy to use. It's about like using, uh, you know, the, the the screen on your smartphone. Whether you're an Android or Apple user, uh, you'll find it familiar. Uh, it's a large, high-resolution color display. You've got status lights that, when you start the measurement with the screen button, you see the the uh, the status light indicating that it's moving and, and traversing. You've got a status light to tell you when it needs to be recharged. Um, you've got some uh, connectivity on the back of it for U different kinds of USB ports. We'll come back to that uh, so that you can connect USB devices such as a printer or a keyboard or a barcode scanner or 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 lots of different kinds of things. And uh, we'll look at what some of those are. So operating it is super easy. It is push the green button to start. Uh, I have the ability to see the profile on the screen. I can uh, tell it that I want to automatically create something like this, a PDF report, and the PDF report is saved in the unit uh, or on a SD memory card that goes into a slot in the back. Again, we'll cover all those different connectivity issues uh, in a second. Um, but the ability with a handheld device that's portable, you can carry it around, um, it can create real documents, measuring reports. You go back, you plug it into your PC, and you've got PDF documents that show the, the measurements that you made. If you're in a job shop or something and you're trying to make a measurement on a bunch of parts, uh, you go out and you have a batch of parts for customer XYZ, and you make uh, 20 measurements to prove uh, that this batch of parts is good and you go back in, you've got your 20 PDF documents, you copy them over, you send them off to your customer, you've got your complete uh, uh, quality documentation. You can measure 31. I said there's about 100 parameters. It was only a handful that, are, that uh, get used very much. So all of the popular parameters are available on the instrument. You can calculate as many of those as you want, including Besides the standard profile like you see here, also the material ratio curve or the uh, amplitude density curve. You can turn on tolerance monitoring. So if the, everything is green there, then uh, everything is good. If any tolerances are out, they turn red. So you can make it really simple for your operators to understand if they've got a good part, a bad part, uh, super, super easy to use. It's got built-in memory, and the built-in memory is ample. You can do at least half a million measurements and, and store those measurements on the uh, on the device. Um, if you want to create those those PDF reports, 
Those take a bit more memory. Uh, you can get about 1,500 PDF reports. And if any of that isn't enough, uh, you can put SD memory cards in to increase the memory uh, and get about four times that. I mentioned different international standards when we talked about different parameters. The ISO, which is kind of the global standards, ASME here in the US, Japanese industrial standards, or the motif French parameters, all are available on the unit. They're all standard. That's not that any of them are options to buy extra. They're just standard and they're in there. You can auto save uh, the, the data so that if you go back and plug it into your PC, you've got just the measurement results saved or the, just the raw profile saved or both. Uh, or the PDF reports saved, and any or all of those can be turned on or off. And you can program uh, the function key that is on the main screen to show you any uh, additional parameters you want or to run certain programs. One of the standard options is to put a Bluetooth dongle in the USB port on the back of it. And with that Bluetooth dongle, you can connect to Bluetooth devices such as a Bluetooth printer. So we offer a kit with that Bluetooth uh, dongle in it and uh, the Bluetooth printer, a portable, rechargeable uh, Bluetooth printer that has a charging base. You can carry it around with you and get things documented. Um, you can also, if you say, I don't want thermal paper like that, I want uh, uh, like the PDF style reports, but I don't want to have to go back and plug them into my computer to get them on my uh, PC. I want to plug a USB cable in and connect to a, a desktop printer uh, at, at that USB port. You, you can do that too and print the PDF directly from the device. In the kit, you get the complete unit. So here it is all uh, assembled the way it comes out of the box. You can remove the drive unit and using an extension cable, which comes with the kit. You can use the drive unit separate from the evaluation unit. Uh, inside the, right up here underneath the, the front, the top cover is uh, the surface patch that you can use to calibrate the unit, it comes with that. Uh, so it comes as one complete kit ready to go with everything you need to make good measurements. That's Take a look. I promise to look at the connectivity features. That's a lot of what makes the M310 really stand out from everything else. Start with this SD slot. You can use up to a 32 gigabyte micro SD card in here. That will increase the memory for uh, all, all of your storage. It can be uh, your measured results, the parameters. It can be the raw profiles. It can be the PDF reports. Uh, it can be any of that, and uh, you can uh, store a lot of data, more data than you uh, can probably ever imagine using, and we hope. Um, you've got this other uh, connector right there, which is the MAR Connect interface. Uh, the next slide, we're going to look at that in a little more detail. You've got a standard USB interface here. You can plug a Bluetooth dongle in there and connect Bluetooth devices like that printer we looked at, um, a scanner, a barcode scanner, uh, keyboard, uh, anything like that. And then you've got a micro USB uh, port where you can plug in and you can actually control this device. So this can be built into fixtures or things like that, and an external program could launch the measurement, uh, get the data back, and, and completely control everything about this device, that, uh, the, the parameters that you want to measure, the, the measurement settings like the cutoffs, uh, all, all of those things can be completely controlled remotely with that. So looking at a few of those things in, in detail, uh, some of you may be familiar with our Marcom software. The Marcom software is a software which allows data collection from all kinds of MAR gauges, um, calipers, micrometers, indicators, just, just anything that you might use. Well, this is no different. You can use a, a MARCOM here, a cable here to connect it to the MARCOM software. MARCOM software is something that is <clears throat> kind of like a, uh, 
let's say a, a traffic director. It takes all the data from the gauges and sends it wherever you want it. Wherever you want it might be a certain data file, a text file, uh, so some location on your network. It could be that you want it sent out a virtual serial port to some other software that's trying to collect the data via a, a serial port. It could be that you want it um, sent like this picture on the screen here to, to Excel and you want to control where, which row and column and what Excel spreadsheet it goes to. All those things are possible. Marcom is a, is a free software that just lets you kind of get the data from all Mar gauges and get it to wherever you want to get it to. So a cable that kind of looks like this, that's got a push button on it to send the data, but you can also, from the PC, request the data. That USB port, not only is it good for connecting to something like a USB printer, but you can actually also connect to that Marcom software via the, the Bluetooth. Uh, that is an option within the Marcom software to connect to the M310 via Bluetooth and collect the data and send it wherever wherever you want to send it. You can also connect something like a barcode scanner. In this picture, it's a, a USB barcode scanner. It's kind of plugged directly in. It can be a handheld Bluetooth one, and you've got the Bluetooth receiver plugged into the, the M310. If you want to plug in multiple things like the printer and the barcode scanner, you can plug in a, uh, a, US, a standard USB hub and plug multiple devices, receivers into that USB hub. Uh, what is kind of neat here is you can have a barcode mean a certain program should be run and a certain program might have certain parameters set that you want to measure and the uh, measuring cutoff and all of that kind of stuff and should save the data to a certain place and should create a PDF. And you can save all of that kind of stuff as a program, and then you can have different programs for different parts, and you can launch the different programs with a barcode scanner. That's a standard feature on the on the M310. So, uh, in, in a shop where you make a, a number of different parts and you bring them to one central place where you measure them with this device, uh, you scan the barcode on the tracking document here that goes with the parts. You've got a tray of these parts. Uh, then you'll you'll automatically get the right program. It'll save the data in the right place. Uh, you can also, well, I mentioned a keyboard. You can connect a keyboard as well. So if after the measurement you in your program set it up so that you want it to come up and uh, ask for the uh, operator name or uh, the spindle number off the machine that it came from for data collection purposes, something like that you can uh, have it come up and prompt the operator and you can add the information from, from a keyboard. So that makes it nice and easy. So a lot of capability that you'd expect with a PC-based system, but available in the M310. The remote control, uh, I mentioned that we can control the M310 from uh, outside software, we can cause it to start measurements, to change parameter settings, to do all of that kind of stuff. So it can be integrated in, or a group of them could be integrated into a, uh, an automated solution to measure surface finish on anything in production, something like that. Uh, so that's another nice feature of, of that. So where can you use it? Well, it's great for out on the shop floor, directly on parts. You can use the extension cable and remove the drive unit. Uh, it, it's small enough and easy enough and handheld so that it can be moved around. We've got quite a few different applications. It can be used with different types of stands to uh, make it possible to measure different types of components. Um, can even be integrated into a fixture where the parts are just placed on it, the button gets pushed and the measurements get made. Uh, in addition to the ability to take the drive unit out and separate it, you can take the drive unit out, separate it and put it into a, there's a standard option uh, here to, to have a, a holder. So it's smaller to go into a board than the whole unit might be. Lots of different kinds of probes as well. 
uh, for different applications, uh, getting into deep grooves, getting into small holes, uh, extensions to get deeper into a, a hole to, to make a measurement, um, kind of tiny pointed uh, solutions to get in between something like gear teeth. All of those things are possible. A double skid, uh, anybody who's in the sheet metal industry might recognize that. There's a special uh, standard for the measurement of rolled sheet steel surfaces that requires the use of a special uh, probe like this with a, du a dual stylus. So um, that's another special application. So all of those things are, are doable with an M310. The things like the uh, calibration standard are, stand, are included in the standard sets. Um, you can, it's like a, a smartphone in that it's got the nice touch screen. If you want to put a uh, protector on the screen because you're using this in a, in a shop floor application where you're concerned about the oil and grease or uh, worse than that, maybe somebody uh, cracking the screen somehow, uh, that's possible. We offer those a size just to fit. The standard kit uh, looks like this. So you get the unit, you get that, uh, the drive unit, you get the evaluation unit, you get the um, holder for the drive unit that we showed you know, for getting inside maybe a bore or holding it to measure some, some kinds of parts where you need, uh, you don't really need a whole stand, but you need a little something to get it like a quarter, half inch off the, the, the surface that you're trying to measure. <coughs> um, you can do that. Um, this, the, the basic kit doesn't come with the printer in it. We also offer it as the same kit plus the printer. Uh, both of them come complete with kind of everything you need from a, a USB cable to connect to your computer, to the drive unit, the probe, the master, uh, everything else that you would need. It's our featured product promo uh, right now. Uh, the current special pricing is uh, $4,590 for the standard kit. The kit with the printer is $500 more. Uh, and they're in stock and available. And if you order now during the, uh, the promo, we're also offering you this glamorous Mar mug to have your coffee while you uh, watch the measurements get made. So what we looked at today is the M310. Why do we want to measure surface roughness and kind of some of the parameters that people might want to measure, might ask you to measure, and the fact that the M310 is capable of measuring all of those, and not only is it capable of measuring all those, it's capable of measuring all those in a way that makes it super easy for you and very integratable into data collection systems, uh, remote control, uh, adding things like uh, barcode scanning to make it uh, really simple for uh, your operators on the shop floor, uh, scan a barcode that's on the documents going with the tray of parts or something like that and be sure that they're using the right program and uh, collecting the data and sending the data to the right place. Uh, it's ideal for that shop floor use and uh, used at the point of manufacturing. And right now with the featured product promo, it's a great value. It's part of our broad range of industrial metrology. If somehow you need more, you need more PC-based capability or whatever, we've got some options, including even using the M310, uh, having it be controlled by a PC, something like that. Uh, we're here to support you. Um, the M310 is an ideal step into the whole Industry 4.0 idea of uh, integrating uh, a measurement tool like this into the, the measurement process and ensuring that the measurements are made correctly. I think it's a good value, a good price right now. Uh, so 
I think that is pretty much all the topics we wanted to cover. Uh, follow up to this uh, webinar, we will send you a link to a recording. We'll send you the data sheet as a PDF and uh, we'll answer any questions you may have. I'll leave the, I don't see any questions in the chat yet. I'll leave this up for another minute or so to see if anybody has any questions. Got any questions, type them in the chat window and we'll, we'll look at them. I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to thank you all again and sign off. Appreciate you spending a little time with us this afternoon to look at the MarSurf M310. Take care. <laughs>